Summary life quantities are determined by linear equations in two variables using the mathematical models. Let's find out in this video what mathematical model is appropriate in solving a particular problem. These are the three mathematical models. We have the numerical model, analytical model, and the geometric model. Let us describe each. When a problem solution is obtained through algorithmic processes, the use of repetitive computations, the process is referred to as a numerical model of that problem. We have some examples. Ordered listing of numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The ordered pairs. We have the points with coordinates 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7. And a table of values. Okay. We make use of algebraic or analytical model for a problem solution obtained through a standard formula or equation. And some examples are the slope intercept form y is equal to mx plus b and the point slope form y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. How about geometric model? When a problem is represented using a graph, chart, diagram, or some other geometric figure, the figure is referred to as geometric model of that problem. An example of this is the graph of the equation of the line. Okay? Let's have some real-life examples so we can realize the use of these mathematical models. Situation number one. The student... Council of Representatives of Notre Dame of Cotabato conducted the Maris Solidarity Day, whose main purpose was to gather funds for the charity projects of the Maris Congregation. The students bought tickets for 125 pesos each. Now, find the cost when four tickets were bought. Now, what I want you to do is make use of this table of values to find out the cost for four tickets. Pause the video for a while and then solve it. Let us now check. For zero tickets sold, of course, the cost will be zero. For one ticket, the cost is 125. For two tickets, mean to say two 125. So that is 250. For three tickets, mean to say three 125. So we have 375. And for four tickets, mean to say four 125. And that is 500. Now, if you will be asked to determine the cost of buying 20 tickets or more, Will you still use this numerical model? Of course not. It would be impractical if you are going to make a table of values up to 20. So what we are going to do is look for a pattern and come up with an equation that will represent the situation. So, how is the cost of each determined? We simply add 125 to the previous value in which we can shorten the process by multiplying 125 to the number of times it is added. Okay. So in the first row, we have 125 times 0 kasi wala naman tayong in na 125. Next is 125. We only have 1s. Then we have for this row, we have 125 times 2. And for the Next row, we have 125 times 3. And for the last row, we have 125 times 4. Now, look at the pattern. What is held constant here is 125. And what changes here are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you look to the, to the left. Okay? Yung 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 ay ang number of tickets T. So, meaning to say, in order for us to get... The cost for the cost of T tickets, we have C now is equal to C is equal to 125 times the number of tickets. Okay, that is 125 times T here. So we have now the equation in getting the total cost in C. Okay, so C now is equal to 125. T. Okay? So, dati natin ang ginagamit natin ay X at saka Y. Now, dito, ginamitan natin siya ng T at saka C kung saan ang C ang ating Y at ang T naman ang ating X. So, ibig sabihin niyan, students, hindi pa natin si X at saka Y ang ginagamit natin na variable. Okay? 
Then, we make use of this equation to solve for the unknown and that is find the cost when 20 tickets were bought. Okay. So, we have now C is equal to 125 times T that is 20. So, the cost of uh, buying 20 tickets would be 2,500. Okay. Then, we can make use of this equation again. If you want to determine the cost for another number of tickets, say 100, 200, thousands, and so on. That is now the advantage of making use of an equation or an analytical model, okay? Because it can solve problems involving bigger values. For smaller values, we can just make use of table of values, but for higher values, it would be practical to make use of an equation. But of course, we can always derive the equation from the table of values. Okay? I hope you are getting it. If you want to get a picture of the situation, we can always make use of a geometric model. In this case, we have the graphical model derived from the table of values and the equation. Now, looking at the table of values, okay, when there are four tickets sold, the cost must be 500. Okay, let's look into here. Four tickets, then 500 is the cost. Then for eight tickets, okay, for eight tickets, we have 1,000. Okay, notice that both the table of values and the graph will give us same answers. Okay. Now, let us relate this um, equation to this graph, okay? What is the slope? The slope of the line is 125, and the y-intercept here is 0, okay? So, this is it. This is equal to our equation in which our c is the y, and our slope is 125, and our x is t. Then, of course, our y-intercept here is 0, now, you might ask me, ma'am, bakit hindi x ang, at saka y ang ginamit mo? Now, again, students, x and y are just variables. So, in algebra, hindi lang sila parating ginagamit na variable. Pwede rin gumamit ng ibang variables, okay? So, c here is the cost, okay, which is our output, okay? Ang y din, students, ay ang ating output, okay? Si t dito ang ating input, Okay, in which CX din ang input. Okay, so actually pareho lang yan sila. So gusto ko masanay kayo na hindi lamang si X at saka Y ang ating ginagamit. Especially kung worded problems. Okay, mas madali kasing tandaan, mas madali mong ma-realize ma yung, yung hinahanap kapag yung initial ng mga variables ang ating ginagamit. Okay. So, that's it. Now, comparing the three models, okay, kailan ba mas magandang or appropriate na gagamitin si table of values, si equation, at saka si graph, okay? Madaling gamitin si table of values kapag ang value ng t or value ng x ay mababa lang. Pero kapag mas malaki na ang value ng x or in, in this case, we have t, um, hindi siya practical. Mas practical gamitin ang equation. Kung gusto mong makita yung picture ng situation, gumamit ka ng geometric model. Let's have another problem. Lina's family rented a van for a day tour. The company charged them with a rental fee of 3,000 plus an additional charge of 1.75 pesos for every kilometer. If they will be traveling a total of 4 kilometers, how much will be charged to them? Can you make use of this table of values to come up with your answer? Pause this video for a while and then play it when done. Let us check. For 0 kilometer added, we have 3,500. For 1 kilometer added, we have 3,501.75. For another 3 kilometers, we have 3,503.75. For 3 kilometers added, we have 3,505.25. And for 4 
kilometers added, Lina's family will be charged with 3,505 pesos. Now, the question. If you will be asked to determine the charge of traveling a total of 620 kilometers or more, will you still use this numerical model? Again, the answer is no. Okay, so what are we going to do? From the numerical model, we're going to come up with an analytical model or an equation. Because again, it's impractical to make a table of values up to 620. So we are going to look for a pattern. For the first row, okay, bakit siya 3,500? Kasi nga, wala namang additional na kilometer. So that is 3,500 plus 1.75 times 0 kasi wala namang additional kilometer. Now, dito, ilang kilometers ang idinagdag? Isa lang. So, we have 3,500 plus 1.75 times 1. Okay. Dito, okay, ilang kilometers ang dinagdag? Dalawa. Kasi meron tayong 1.75 plus 1.75. Sa kasunod naman, naging tatlo at naging apat. Ngayon, na-notice natin na Ang constant lamang dito ay ang 3,500. 3,500 plus itong 1.75. Ano itong pabago-bago? Yung pabago-bago ay ang number of kilometers. Notice kung ano yung number dito, ganun din ang nasa left side, which is the number of kilometers. So, ibig sabihin, ito pala ay ang ating K. So, ito na ngayon ang ating equation para malaman natin ang phi. So, that is phi is equal to 3,500 plus 1.75K or it can be written this way. F is equal to 1.75K plus 350 in which ito yung ating Y, ito ang ating slope, ito ang ating X, at ito ang ating y-intercept. Okay? So, very easy. Now, gagamitin natin itong equation na ito para malaman natin kung magkano i-charge kung meron silang additional na 620 kilometers. Okay? So, we'll be making use of this equation. Okay? Then, substitute the value of K, which is equal to 620. So, we have F now is equal to 1.75 times 620 plus 3,500. Okay? 1.75 times 620 is 1,085, adding 3,500 in it. Okay? So, we have 4,585. So, this only means that Lina's family will be charged with 4,585 pesos when they travel a total of 620 kilometers. So, for each geometric or graphical model, it's quite difficult to graph the equation since it entails big scales. We can make use of any graphing application to find the answer. So, I use a graphing application here and come up with this graph. Notice that it's quite difficult to determine the answer if we make use of the graph in solving the problem. We can only estimate the answer but not really getting the exact value. Okay? So, for oral recitation, our next online class, you are expected to answer the five questions shown. And it's also found in your book. Okay? Let's now move on to the third situation. Aina, fresh graduate, was offered a job by two computer stores and will be assigned in selling laptops online and offline. The first store offered a daily rate of 500 pesos and a commission of 70 pesos for every laptop sold. The second store offered her a daily rate of 400 and a commission of 80 per pesos per laptop sold. If both companies sell an average of 5 laptops per day, which company will give her the best salary? Now, kindly use the table of values to solve the problem. Okay? Now, after solving the problem, play the video again to, sh to check your own work. Let us now check. Looking at the table of values, it is very clear that store A gives the higher salary. Okay? Now, if both stores sell at 10 or more laptops a day, Will you still use this model to determine Aina's salary? 
Of course not, it would be impractical. So, we are going to make use of an analytical model or an equation, okay, and derive it from the numerical model or table of values. So, what we are going to do is look for a pattern, okay. So, this one can be uh, written like this, and what's held constant here are 570. Ang nagbabago lamang dito ay ang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 kung saan ito rin ang ating values of x. So, therefore, we can write this situation or express the situation as y is equal to 500x, 500 plus 70x or y is equal to 70x plus 500 for store A. Okay? So, if we're going to make use of this equation, okay, when the store sells 10 laptops, okay, Aina will be receiving 1,200 pesos. Kung 20 naman, okay, 1,900 ang makukuha ni Aina. Let's have story B. Okay. So, from this, we can have this observation or the pattern. Okay. And then, from the pattern, we're going to come up with the equation. And this equation is, y is equal to 400 plus 80x or y is equal to 80x plus 400 wherein our slope is 80 and our y-intercept is 400. Okay. When the store sells an average of 10 laptops okay, a day, Aina will be receiving 1,200. But if the store will be selling 20 laptops a day, Aina will be receiving 200. So comparing the two stores, okay, store A... Okay, if both stores sell an average of 10 laptops a day, notice that both stores will just give an uh, Aina same salary. So, ang decision natin dito ay kung papipiliin siya, she can just choose between the two stores. Okay, paano kung 20? Okay, si store A mag-o-offer sa kanya ng 1,900, si store B ay mag-o-offer sa kanya ng 2,000. So, Comparing the two, store B will give Aina a higher salary. Now, if Aina would like to see the salary pattern of each store for easy decision making, will this model give her a good picture of it? Now, it will be the geometric model. Okay. So, what pattern or trend is observed from the graph? If both stores sell less than 10 laptops a day, store A would give her a higher salary. Okay. Ma nasa taas ang blue colored line than the red colored line. Okay. Next, the point of intersection shows that the two stores will give the same amount of salary when both sell an average of 10 laptops per day. And then, if both stores sell more than 10 laptops per day, store B will give her a higher salary. Okay. This model allows us to have a picture of Aina's salary if she will be staying for good in each store, which cannot be easily seen in the other two mathematical models. Okay. Let us now compare the three mathematical models. Okay. We have numerical model, geometric model, and analytical model. If we are solving for smaller values of x, table of values is the most practical to use. But if we are solving for bigger values of x, the analytical model is more convenient to use. It would be time-consuming if you make use of table of values. That is why, from the table of values, we can derive the equation by looking at patterns. And if you want to look for pattern, trend, or comparison between the behavior of two or more graphs, the geometric model is more convenient to use. This model can be generated by using the table of values or the equation. For submission, kindly answer activity 19, the best model, set A.